Hi everyone, I want to go through the density of liquids lab because uh, in your class only three out of nine of you turned in the lab and did the self-assessment and turned in the self-assessment rubric. So six of you still need to finish the lab, three of you that did it could probably go back and do some revision so that you can do better with it because I'm going to eventually be grading this lab as a summative assessment. So I want to give you the chance to make some improvements and do well with it. So first thing I want to do, let's quickly go through about the hypothesis here, right? You should have a hypothesis that you should have typed in at the beginning of this whole process before we actually collected data. That hypothesis should follow the if then because model. Your if then and because all should be relating back to the problem up here or the question. So our question in this case is, does changing the volume of a liquid change the density? Your if and then should be related to your independent and dependent variables as you've identified them out of this question. The because should be your reasoning why you think it's going to happen. If you're not sure how to do that, I suggest that you ask about some help in the live video chat. Looking at the procedure, we've already collected the data, or at least you should have. Steps seven and eight are what I want to focus on, making your graphs. So the first graph is the mass of the liquid compared to the volume for both liquids A and B. The second graph is the density of the liquid compared to the volume for both A and B. So I'm going to take a look at that. And that, to do that, I'm going to swap over here and go to the um, density data table that we created as a spreadsheet here. I've already created the two graphs. What I did was, if I move this graph for a minute, I took the data from here. I took the data from this part of the data table here, and I moved it. I just copied what I needed over into here with volume, mass, and liquid so that I could make the graph more easily. Okay. Notice that none of these have any labels, right? The labels are all at the top of the columns. A lot of people put ML in here or G in here. And when you do that, it messes it up so that you can't do the graph properly. Okay, so make sure you've got it set it up properly. Your mass of liquid compared to volume, the graph should look something like this. Make sure you've followed all your proper conventions and done everything you need to with your graph. Again, if you're not sure, if you're having trouble remembering, check in via the live video chat so that you can ask questions. Okay, you'll see that with the mass of the liquid, I get these two trend lines here. Okay, the density over here, same thing, I did it the same way. Okay, but the graph looks a little bit different because my lines basically are straight lines now. Okay, but it's still set up the same way, all the formatting is the same, etc. So, these are what your graphs should end up looking like. If they don't, you need to go back and figure out where did you make your mistakes and how do I fix that? Again, use the live video chat to ask questions and get help if you need it. Once you have these graphs done, if we go back to the questions here, first question, how the densities of liquid A compare? How do all the densities of liquid? Here's a typo. Nobody caught this before. Okay, this should be liquid B. So change that on your document so that you're answering the question, how do the densities of liquid A compare? How do all the densities of liquid B compare? The idea here is you're basically looking at your densities. How close to the line are they? Or looking at your data table here, how do all the numbers for liquid A compare? How do all the numbers for liquid B compare? Is it nice, precise data that they're all really close together? Or is it wildly scattered? Those are the type of things to talk about. Don't just tell me they're all about this number. Explain it to me. Question two, how does the density of liquid A compare to liquid B? Use the average density. So again, go back to your data tables, look at your averages that you hopefully calculated and compare the two and talk about them and say, liquid A is more, less, the same, whatever it might be. Number three, explain the relationship between the variables for the mass versus volume graph. So go to your mass versus volume. 
look at it and tell me. Basically, when we say compare them, we're saying as one uh, variable, in this case the volume of the liquid, changes, how does this one change? So looking at both of these lines, if the volume of the liquid is increasing, what's happening to the mass of the liquid? That's what you want to be talking about to properly answer that question. Question four, explain the relationship between the variables for the density versus volume graph. Same idea. Go to your density versus volume graph. As the volume of the liquid is increasing, how is the density of the liquid changing? That's what you want to be talking about. Okay? Always make sure you're comparing the same liquid, right? If you're talking about volume of liquid changing and you're looking at density of liquid, make sure you're following one line. Volume of liquid A, as it changes, this is what happens to the density of liquid A. Volume of liquid B, as it changes, this is what happens to the density of liquid B. That's the type of stuff you want to talk about to properly answer those questions. Okay? The few people who did this so far, fairly limited detail in the questions, so you need to be a bit more detailed with your questions. Finally, for question five, explain how this data relates to your hypothesis. Explain using data from the lab. If my hypothesis said that if the volume increases, then the density will also increase because the more you have, the more the density will be, whatever my reasoning was, then I would have to explain how this data relates to it. In which case, I would go back and talk about my data and say, you know, based on this data, what I can see is that as the volume of liquid increases, for every 10 that it increases, this is how much my density increases, decreases, stays the same, whatever the case might be. Talk about the specifics. Again, put details in there. The key, though, is to put details in that are clear and concise and make sense, not details where you're just repeating random things. Okay? Once again, I'm going to highly encourage people, if you have questions as you try to go through this, please, Use the live video chat to contact me and ask me questions. Okay, have a good day. Get this done.